Welcome to the Coaching Coordinator Podcast. I'm your host, Keith Grabowski, and this is our Quick Cast series. What is a Quick Cast? You already know the Coaching Coordinator Podcast for interviews that touch the many areas of the skill set and mindset that makes a successful coach. In our Quick Cast, we focus on a coach's most powerful insight on a single topic. We pull out the most useful, interesting, and helpful ideas into an episode you can consume in 15 minutes or less. It's our up-tempo version of the podcast. With a library of over 1,000 episodes, we have plenty of these nuggets to share with you to help you improve your own mindset and skill set as a coach. Enjoy. This episode is presented by CoachTube with special thanks to the Texas High School Coaches Association. Today's quick cast is with the defending national champion LSU Tigers head coach, Ed Orgeron. Coach O shares his thoughts on developing a coaching style that is true to who you are and some of the things you can do as a position coach to prepare yourself to be the head coach someday. Coach O never coordinated a position. He excelled as a position coach and a recruiter, and his organizational skills allowed him to elevate himself to the position he wanted since he was six years old. In the first segment, Coach O shares his thoughts on coaching style and how it's important to be yourself. All right, style of coach, all right? Number one, be yourself. They see right through you. You try to be somebody else. And we all know some great coaches out there. We've seen guys try to mimic it all. It doesn't work. Just be yourself, man. The players are going to see that. Other coaches are going to see that, okay? Obviously, I've got to be me. <laughs> it's not going to work. And, uh, you know, you got to decide. You got to decide what you're going to be, man. What kind, what kind of coach you are. I'm energy. You guys know who I am, man. A, a tough, hard-nosed defensive line coach. Became a head coach. Had to learn. Took my hard knocks. You know, hey, you got to you you uh, block out the noise. The media is going to say this. They're going to say this. Other people are going to say that. But you got to decide what you want to get done. I want, at six years old, I wanted to be the head coach of the LSU Tigers. At six years old, I told my father that. And, and, and it happened. Thank God it happened. And there was a lot of good breaks along the way. I understand that. But my whole goal was to be here at LSU. There's not one day I've come to work at LSU. I come to work with a smile. I work all day. And uh, it's just something I always want to do in my life. And I hope all of you get to reach that goal sometime in your life. In the next section, Coach emphasizes the positive attitude a coach must take towards work. When you step in the building, it's about being focused on the task at hand. I tap in every day, man. Hey, we all got stuff. We all got stuff at home. And you know what? Hey, let's come to work. Attitude towards work. When I step in that building, I'm going to work my tail off today. Days pass fast here. The days roll. We get in the office at 6 in the morning, and right now we leave at about 6, 7 at night, and, and we just can't get enough done in the day. As we know, Coach O became a head coach without being a coordinator. He did become an expert at his job as a position coach. In this segment, he shares his insight on knowledge of your position. You must be a student of the game and stay up with everything happening in the game, especially at your position. Always working, just like you are today. Always working hard to keep up. You know, and you guys know this, none of us have all the answers. This game is changing. We hired a young man named Joe Brady, came in and put in a spread offense, him and Steve Esmeg, I let him go. I'm a defensive coach. Hey, all I said was that a boy. Way to go, man. But as far as the knowledge of your position, be an expert at your position. If there's one thing that Coach O has become acutely aware of, it's the treatment of the players. He talks about what he learned from becoming the head coach at Ole Miss and from Sean Payton at the New Orleans Saints. He shares what he learned about how he had to treat his players in order to be a successful coach. Here's, here's something that I have to learn. When I was uh, a defensive line coach at the University of Miami, you had to be tough or no. You had Warren Sapp. I mean, I, you walk in there and, and you walk in there like a, a pencil neck or something like that, they, <laughs> it ain't going to happen. And then, you know, went to USC and they like the toughness. And then I become a head coach in Ole Miss, and I tried to teach or coach, just like I was coaching the defensive line. That didn't work. It broke the coaches, 
It broke the quarterback, broke the receivers, the kickers. So I had to understand as a head coach how I was going to treat my players. And here's what I decided. After I got fired, and a lot of us got fired, some of you haven't. God bless you if you didn't. Uh, when you, you get fired, you kind of learn about yourself. And I was leaving Mississippi, and I called one of my mentors, and obviously – Human nature, I wanted to start complaining and doing this. Well, he said, hey, 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 hell was wrong. Listen up. The only person you can change is yourself. I want you to start working on what you got to get better. And I did. And I went a while. and uh, I went to the Saints. I learned from Sean Payton, who I thought was a great coach. I was in the NFL. I like the NFL, but I rather, rather college. I miss Lane asked me to go to Tennessee with him. So I, I was working my life, way up the ladder on how I was going to be a head coach again, writing down stuff, studying coaches, all this stuff. Here's the thing I came up with. Out of all the things, I was cooking for my kids in the backyard. I had a year off. They were playing. They were, uh, no, this is when I was at the Saints. They were playing peewee ball or something like that. I told their friends I'd cook for them every Monday night. They'd come over. I got along great with those kids. And I said to myself, when I become a head coach again, if I treat every one of these players like my sons, they will go through a wall for us and we'll have a great relationship. So that's what I do. I tell our players, now I'm not going to be soft on them, just like my sons. When there's discipline, there's discipline. But everyone in this building knows that they're going to be treated fairly by Coach O, just like you as family. And that, that's what I decided. That now, style of coach right there, that's where we at. One of the reasons Coach O made the jump from position coach to head coach was that he was highly organized. He discusses organizational skills here. And I'm going to show you the things that I learned from other coaches and just put it all together. Now, I became a head coach at – Ole Miss, uh, interim coach at USC, and the head coach of the LSU Tigers, and I've never been an offensive defensive coordinator. So you don't have to be a coordinator. It doesn't help, yes. I was a recruiting coordinator. But I do believe that you have a chance, if you want to be a head football coach, of being very organized and detailed as a position coach and a recruiter to become a head coach. And that can be done teaching progression. Coach gives the example of what he learned from Butch Davis in 1988 and emphasizes the importance of developing your teaching progression. He shares his example stance, alignment, assignment, and the importance of hips and hands. This is a video clip we will share in our November issue of our new digital magazine, Coach and Coordinator Monthly. More about that at the end of the show. All right, here's the teaching progression I learned from Butch Davis in 1988. All right, teacher progressive stance, alignment, assignment. I'm going to challenge you guys and no answer or nothing like that. Do I have a teacher progression? Do I have a drill list? Am I doing all these things that Coach Orgeron showed me? If I'm not, if I want to elevate, if I want to go to college, if I want to get maybe a defensive coordinator or head coaching job or where I'm at, if I want to go to college, if I want to make a million dollars a year, if I want to be a head football coach and make that big money, I have to pay the price here. Okay, so these things are, are for you if you want it. Stance, alignment, assignment. That is the knowledge part of progression. I'm going to know my stance. I'm going to know my alignment. I'm going to know my assignment before the ball is snapped. All right, next thing, get off. It's the most important thing we do. Get off on the football. I would just not run it up the field. When that football moves, our hand is tied to that football. We crank it. We're coming out of our hips and hands. But we used to say hat and hands. We don't say that no more. We used to leave it to help. And to be able to deliver a blow, your hips got to come forward first, not that first step, okay? Separation. Lock him out, man. Release. Release when the ball is committed to your gap violently. Pursuit. Run to the football. We do pursuit drill here at LSU, and it's fantastic. And tackling. We teach tackling. We teach tackling every day. 
especially at the beginning of the season as a head coach, is something I'll worry about. It's catching the football, ball security, and tackling. The drill list. Every coach needs to have an organized list that is directly related to the things that happen on the field in games. Coach O explains the importance of having every drill on tape. Not many of you had this. I, have, I didn't get this when I was 52 years old when I studied under Pete Jenkins. Okay, So this is a drill list that I put up on the board. And when we do our practice schedules, I'll make our coaches write down their individual every day and make sure that it's very organized according to the skills that our players have to get better at. So here's our LSU drill list. We're going to email it to you. We're welcome to have it. Here we go. Footwork. Check that out. I want to work on footwork. Here's the drills, man. Power scoop. We got every one of these drills are on tape. Remember this. I do believe this. I learned this from Pete. When you got a new player, before you go out and do a drill with him, show him on tape. Show him on tape, explain it, then walk through it, and then go do it. I think the player learns better. All right, power scoop, low bag run, shuffle drill, shuffle open hips and run, shuffle retract drill. These are all drills that we do, okay, with our footwork. And, I, and I, you know, I'm not uh, – I'm not an auditorium right now. I'd get in the base and I'd show you all this stuff. I am, but I got it on tape, okay? All right, next. Pre-practice drill. Hoorah. All that is an agility drill. And we tell our guys that we want our feet moving, eyes up, okay? And then we tell them to hit the ground and we want to pop up. All the players are going to get on the ground, but we want to teach them how to pop up. All right, round bags. All right, stunt teach, steer drill. Primary gap, responsibility drill, run block release, swim, shrug, three-point release, okay? Pass practice, get off, dip the tip, pass your route, pull slide, and there's more, I promise you. Block reaction, base, reach, cut off, box drill, tackling, form tackle, release form tackle, spin tackle, release spin tackle, angle tackle, release angle tackle. Guys, I have... Obviously, this would be a month to show you all this. I have all this stuff on drill, on drill tape. You send it to me, I will send you the LSU drill list and the drill tape, okay? All right, sled work, six-point, three-point explosion. Importance of having a drill list. The drill list ensures that all the drills and skills you teach are covered during camp so players can be successful. Listen to what Coach O thinks about the importance of this list. Some of you guys will be saying, well, Coach, I'm a DB coach. Well, yeah, I understand. Or uh, I'm, I'm an offensive line coach. Whatever it is, I think there's a way, as you know, you can use this format and don't have to be exactly like it is, but put all your drills down. And then when we do our um, when we do our practice schedules for camp, because you guys know our camp is, we we're going ahead and we we're going to uh, make sure that we're doing all these drills during camp and be very well organized and see how many times we do them and when we got to go back and do them and be equal and make sure that we're covering all these drills to have our guys be successful as defensive linemen or linebackers or receivers or quarterbacks. I believe this works everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the Coaching Coordinator Podcast Quick Cast Series. Get the link to this entire talk from Coach O shared at the Texas High School Football Coaches Association convention this past July. Check the show notes for the link to CoachTube. We are excited that we have a new home for the podcast at coachandcoordinator.com. Get the show notes, articles, and resources here, as well as being able to subscribe soon to our free digital magazine in which we will share extra content, articles, diagrams, videos that are talked about on the podcast. Follow me on Twitter for updates at Coach K. Grabowski.